the affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. It's overwhelmingly in our interest that China prosper. That we have to level the playing field. But the end of these two wars affords us an opportunity. It allows us to refocus our intelligence and military assets and resources to other parts of the world where they are needed, where we face new challenges. This is the world you are graduating into. This is what I want to talk about today with you for a few minutes. I believe we, and particularly you, your class, has an incredible window of opportunity to lead in shaping a new world order for the 21st century. Since it's clear that you're not corrupt and you got elected, why should people think that the system produces corrupt results when there you are? Well, I'm not sure you should assume I'm not corrupt, but I thank you for that, though. The system does produce corruption, and in, in, I think implicit in the system is corruption, when in fact, whether or not you can run for public office, and it costs a great deal of money to run for the United States Senate, even from a small state like Delaware, uh, you have to go to those people who have money, and they always want something. I, I would not recommend that anyone pick me for vice president. <laughs> The president and the entire team close to him has encouraged me not to try to all of a sudden be a different Joe Biden than I was for the past 36 years. The president wants everyone to know, his team and us, Hello. in case there's any question, that he thinks he made a brilliant choice. Done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again. He was given an F. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. Most people didn't know who he was. You know, Joe Biden, Biden, and now they're going to say, oh, yeah, he's the guy who plagiarized. That's a lot of people. First. Politically, that's <laughs> devastating. If they're going to do things that are stupid as well as immoral, then they're probably too dumb to have the job of president. The voters are going to have to decide whether he was dishonest or dumb. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. The World Federalist Association, or WFA, is one of the largest organizations that openly promote world government. Periodically, the WFA extends a global governance award to a prominent individual pushing for the same goal. Former CBS anchorman Walter Cronkite was among the recipients of the WFA award. Thank you very much. Today we must develop federal structures on a global level to deal with world problems. We need a system of enforceable world law, a democratic federal world government. In a closed circuit hookup, Hillary Clinton congratulated Cronkite. For decades you told us the way it is. But tonight, we honor you for fighting for the way it could be. In 1993, the WFA honored an editor for Time magazine for an essay he had written entitled, The Birth of a Global Nation. Nationhood as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize a single global authority. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations, a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea a new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security. We've got to win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've got to invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure, have no 
uh, means for young people to, to get ahead. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. The time has come for the world to move in a new direction. We must embrace a new era of engagement based on mutual interest and mutual respect. And our work must begin now. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully, one rooted on four basic principles. Non-proliferation and disarmament, the promotion of peace and security, the preservation of our planet, and a global economy that advances opportunity for all.